Hello and welcome to the Excel VBA object series. In this video we'll talk about the worksheet function object. Remember this series focuses on each of the most important VBA objects in Excel individually. So we had already a video about the application object, the workbook object, and the worksheet object so far. And we also had some introductory videos in this series about the Excel object model, the object hierarchy, object properties, methods and events, and the object browser. You can find all of that in the Excel VBA Objects playlist in this channel, and you can read it too in the Excel Macro Class blog, or get the Excel VBA Objects guide available also in the blog to get more content and practical examples. The worksheet function object is a container for all the built-in worksheet functions in Excel, so these are all those functions you can use directly on a cell after the equal sign, or adding from here and there are hundreds of them. You have probably used a few or more than a few, for example, if you are doing financial or statistical analysis in Excel. We refer to the worksheet function object when we want to use those functions in the macros. So we reference the worksheet function object simply with worksheet function, and after the dot, we see the list of methods that apply to the object, which are actually the functions. It is important to clarify that these are worksheet functions, not VBA functions. I'm going to explain that in more detail later in this video. So if we want to get the average of values in a range, we would say worksheet function dot average and the range in parentheses. For example, range A1 to A10. And remember, that applies to the active sheet. If we want to get the range in other worksheet, we would need to reference that worksheet before, so sheet2 dot or sheets and the sheet name, etc. Let's remove that for now and work only with the active sheet. Then we can put that into a variable, let's say my average, so that we can work with that result and use it for other operations or show it to the users in a message box or add it to a cell. Let's put it in a message box. So if we add some numbers, one to 10, and run the macro, we get the average here. So what we just did is exactly the same we would do directly on a cell, right? So for example, here equals average and highlight the range, and that's the same outcome. We can use any other mathematical functions in the same way. We can get the sum, the minimum or maximum value, etc. There is another very useful method of the worksheet function object or a function in Excel that allows to do operations with only visible cells, and that's the subtotal function. So if we use filters and want to get only the sum or the average of the cells that have been filtered and are actually visible, we use the subtotal function, specifying the operation plus 100. For example, subtotal 1 gets the average of all values, including hidden values, while subtotal 101 gets the average of the visible cells only. You can see the enumeration right on the worksheet, writing equal subtotal and parentheses, and you see the different functions here, average, count functions, minimum, maximum, standard deviation, variance, etc. And see the same as starting on 101 for average that apply to visible cells only. So back to the macro, we can write worksheet function subtotal 101 range A1 to A10. And if we filter the data, we're gonna get the average of filter values. So let's now filter some values. But we need to add a header, number, and let's move out the formula up here. And then, if we filter, that's still the same because it's using the average function. We should use the subtotal instead if we want to get the average of what we see. You can see that already down here because Excel uses the subtotal here to get the average and the sum. And if we go back to the macro and just update the range, we're gonna write A2 to A11, or we can write AA, so the whole column, 
And as you probably know by now, you can put the range into an object variable for easier handling. So dim target range as range, and then set target range equals range AA, for example, so column A, and then we replace it here. Other very useful functions that I personally use a lot in the macros are the count A and count if functions. So again, we can just write worksheet function count A, for example, and the range can be target range. And if we put that in a variable, we'll get 11 because there are 10 numbers plus the header. And that's the count of cells with content. If we filter the data, we still get 11. We need to use subtotal to get the count of visible cells only. And the reference for count A is 103. Now we get only the number of those filter cells plus the header. Now let's see some other methods of the worksheet function object. For example, the VLOOKUP function. We just write worksheet function dot VLOOKUP and then we add the same arguments we use in a cell. So the value we want to look up, comma, the table or range where we look, and the column we are retrieving from that table. Let's say the second column and zero or false to get the exact match. So let me add some data here. For example, the name of the month for each number. And then if we look for seven, put it into a variable and display the message box, that's July. We can also use the match method to get the row in a table or range for a given value within a column. So target row would be the worksheet function match for my value, which was July, in range BB, so in column B. And if we put that in a message box, we get eight. That's the row index. Or we can use index to get the value from a row reference with target value, worksheet function dot index, range BB, so column B, and the target row, which was row eight before. And for column B, that would give again the name of the month. So it's July. If we use column A, it would return seven. There are many other functions and whatever functions you are currently using in Excel today, you can run them with macros using the worksheet function object. Now I want to explain and try to clarify the difference between worksheet functions and VVA functions in case that's confusing for you. Let's see an example first. The replace method of the worksheet function can replace a value in a cell or in a variable like this. If we have this variable old version as Microsoft Excel 2013, and we are using a variable, but this could be the value in a cell or range. And then we set the new version variable equals worksheet function dot replace the old version, comma, the start position where we're gonna replace a string, comma, the number of characters we're gonna replace, we're gonna replace four, comma, the string we want to replace that with, and it's gonna be 2016. So if we put that in a message box, the outcome is Microsoft Excel 2016. Now, we can do the exact same thing with a VVA function. A VVA function is a standalone command used in the code. So in this case, there is a replace VVA function. So we could simply write new version equals replace in the old version, comma, 2013 with 2016. And the outcome is the same, 
Microsoft Excel 2016. But as you see, it's easier to use. So in many cases, it's more convenient to use VVA functions in the macros. Another such example is the in-string VVA function, which does the same job as the search method of the worksheet function object. Both return the position of a substring within a string. So for example, letter position equals in string of Excel macro class, comma, we're going to look for the letter M, comma, starting on the first position, 1. And this returns number 7, because the letter M is in the seventh position. And that would be very similar using the worksheet function object. So in this case, we have letter position equals to worksheet function dot search for the letter M in Excel macro class and starting on the position 1. You can find the list of all VVA functions in the Excel macro class blog or in the appendix of the Excel VVA guide for beginners. And the full list of methods of the worksheet function object which is more extensive because there are hundreds of them in the appendix of the Excel VVA objects guide or, of course, in the VVA object browser. In the next video of this series, we'll start with the king of the Excel objects, which is the range object. And we've covered the basics for that already in the tutorial for beginners. But now we're going to dive deeper into this object. So probably I'm going to need more than one video for that. Let's see. So stay tuned for more and thanks for watching.